All right, so thank you so much for joining today. My name is Amber Webb, and I am the Family Consumer Sciences Extension uh, agent for Larimer County. So I teach a variety of classes. And a CSU Extension, if you're not already aware, um, is a land grant university for Colorado. So as CSU, we have the opportunity and the responsibility to teach students, adding to a growing body of knowledge um, through what we research and extend that to what we know to out, out to all Coloradoans. Um, so this presentation is a perfect example of that work exactly. So um, we're dedicated to serving the current and future needs of Colorado by providing science-based, research-based information um, and programs that safeguard health, increase livelihood, and enhance well-being for all. So thank you for joining. And really, that's the mission of the work that I'm doing here today. And I did want to share this slide with you as well. This is an equal opportunity access and non-discrimination statement. Um, we do this for all of our presentations. Um, so if you have any questions about that, please let me know um, after the presentation. So today we are going to be covering a really wonderful amount of information. But the objective specifically, if you're curious, is that we're gonna be learning the key characteristics and health benefits of the Mediterranean lifestyle. We'll learn easy tips for following the Mediterranean lifestyle and then discovering strategies for incorporating budget-friendly Mediterranean foods and habits into your life. I know that, um, I know people that feel like they do want to do, take on the Mediterranean diet, but they feel like it's just so expensive. And today I'm really going to try to help you uh, see that it doesn't have to be that way. So again, thanks for being here. Um, so I wanted to just really set this up. What is the Mediterranean diet? Um, why is it so good for us? Um, really what I want to hammer home to you is that it's a lifestyle or it's a dietary pattern. And it's characteristic of those living in regions around the Mediterranean Sea. Now, where did this come from? This was brought to the public's attention by Ansel Keys in a seven country study published in 1970, okay? So 1970, think about that time um, in history, what was going on and how things have changed and how it's still so applicable. So this landmark study was based on the observation that residents in the regions around the Mediterranean Sea had the lowest incidence of coronary heart disease of any region that had been studied worldwide, okay? So although it's a, called a diet, the Mediterranean diet is not about cutting calories or restricting foods like many popular diets in uh, America today. Um, really, it's more of a way of life. It, like we say, it's a lifestyle or a dietary pattern rather than a strict diet, okay? So what does that mean? People in the region of the Mediterranean have these lifestyle correct characteristics in common. So they enjoy a wide variety of whole nourishing foods that are mostly plant-based. They uh, eat smaller portions. They enjoy eating in the company of others and practice leisurely mindful eating, not eating on the go, which so many of us do, and I'm absolutely guilty of at times as well. But then they also have an active lifestyle. It's more built into their daily life than just having to you know, go to the gym for 30 minutes or an hour every day. Um, they are just moving more frequently than we do here in America, okay? So the secret of a lifestyle or dietary pattern rather than a diet is that you can eat the foods that you like, but you need to be mindful and eat smaller portions of some foods to fit in to have more beneficial foods. So what are those key characteristics of that Mediterranean diet that I'm talking about? There is a Mediterranean diet pyramid. So you might be familiar with the My Plate or the former My Pyramid um, for USDA, uh, but this is the Mediterranean Diet Pyramid. Now, from a larger perspective, this pyramid helps to explain the Mediterranean lifestyle eating pattern as a whole, and then incorporating all the patterns like we just discussed. So take a look at this. At the base of the pyramid, what do you see? It's physical activity. It's people enjoying their time together. It's doing activities that some people might enjoy and others may not. So you can see a couple here going for a walk, um, some uh, people playing soccer, 
other people dancing. So whatever suits you and how you like to move, it's what's encouraged as a part of this lifestyle, okay? And then you can see how, sitting around at a meal um, with a family in a relaxed setting and really enjoying that um, experience. Now, the next thing up is the largest part of the pyramid. So really the largest emphasis in the Mediterranean diet is consuming things like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, legumes, herbs and spices. These types of foods are consumed with nearly every meal and they make up the bulk of that meal, okay? Now next up from that is fish and seafood. And those are often consumed about two times a week. You might have a hard time seeing down the side of this pyramid. And what I'm what I'm saying is um, making sure that you are seeing is that smallest text, text and that's showing you the frequency of how often the foods are eaten, okay? Above the fish and seafood are things like eggs, cheese, yogurt, and poultry. They're eaten on a weekly basis. Um, maybe a couple times a week, but again, in modest portions. And then at the very top, you are seeing less uh, red meat and sweets. Now they're consumed less, even more than anything else, maybe a couple of times a month. Now think about your diet. How does that look? And think about some of those comparisons. Now down the other side, wine in moderation and drinking plenty of water. And we'll get to those two specifics and we'll get to all these specifics as we go on, okay? So what does that look like as far as making recommendations? So in your diet. So one of the things we talk about is limiting the intake of highly processed foods. Now I'm gonna break each one of these down for you in the next following slides, but you can see here's the list, eight things specifically for the Mediterranean diet choosing, including choosing more whole grains, eating that wide variety of fruits and vegetables, consuming less red meat, using olive oil as a main source of fat, and we'll break that down as well, that moderate dairy piece, moderate wine, and then also, which I love this component, incorporating fresh herbs and spices, and not discounting the significance of that, port, that piece of this. Okay, so Thinking about that Mediterranean region, what was discovered is that people living in this region have a very limited intake of highly processed foods. Now, highly processed foods is a concern because they often have a very high amount of sodium and sugar, artificial flavors and colors, and at the same time have less fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So you're getting kind of a double whammy against um, the nutritional value available to you. So. What that means is it's best to eat foods in their, or close to as their original whole form, because you'll generally get more nutrients per calorie in this form, okay? So some people say, what does that really mean? Where you see the word whole food here. A whole food is something that's been processed or refined as little as possible, and is free from additives or other artificial substances. And many fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and unprocessed meats are examples of whole foods. But think about also as on a budget side of things, since we're gonna be talking about that as well, highly processed foods can be, depending on what they are, more expensive than the whole part. And I think a really great example of that is something like um, canned beans. You can buy a one pound bag of dried beans for, depending on where you're shopping, a dollar, maybe $2 or maybe more, but when you buy uh, canned beans, um, that convenience of the, the food being cooked for you, it's being it's processed somewhat, is going to be a little bit more expensive because you're paying for that processing time and you're paying for the packaging, right? Versus getting a bag of dry beans and cooking them yourself. It's cheaper and you'll get a lot more for your dollar, okay? So the next one is choosing more whole grains. Um, whole grains in the region are consumed more often than refined or white grains. And really to break this down for you, to make it you know, as simple as possible, you, I have here a photo of a wheat kernel now, or a drawing of a wheat kernel. So when grains are refined or processed, you can see here the bran and the germ are lost, okay? And that's where the fiber and the minerals and the vitamins are all stored.
Um, so then you're missing out on valuable nutrients and you're consuming a grain that's processed or in the refined for form. So what you're seeing um, is an example of the inside is the endosperm. And that's what you're getting when you're purchasing something like all-purpose flour, okay? Um, which is it's great for baking, but not necessarily the most nutritional bang for your buck um, because of how uh, that grain is processed, okay? Now, what the recommendation is, is to eat more grains, right? So what does that look like? Making at least half of them whole grains. How do you do that? You can look for um, the very specific part of the label that tells you that. So you're going to be reading your ingredients list. Now, when you look at your label, underneath all the nutrition facts is where the ingredient list is. You probably already know this, um, but the first ingredient that you see should say whole wheat or whole grain, okay, on breads and pastas and other kinds of grains. And then the rest of the ingredients are listed in order of the amount in that product in descending order, okay? So the first ingredient is the most or the highest amount of um, uh, some kind of ingredient in that product, okay? So if you're seeing whole wheat and it's the number one, then you know you're getting a really solid whole grain product, okay? So we talk about, you know, using, experimenting with other types of grains. So if you aren't familiar with other whole grains, um, such as quinoa, farro, bulgur, there's so many different kinds available to you. That might be a really fun thing to explore uh, because they are so delicious and they've got all that nutrition in there. How do you use them though? Um, things like soups, casseroles, salads, or simply on the side is a really great option. Um, I have a toddler who loves, um, currently, he really likes quinoa and I'm so surprised and I love it. Um, sometimes just by itself, it's a little overwhelming, um, but if I mix it with um, rice or barley, he likes to eat it that way. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Okay. Um, you can practice um, cooking them in different uh, ways, like using your electric pressure cooker. I actually cook most of my grains in my electric pressure cooker, and I really like that. Um, one more little tip for whole grains is, you know, making oatmeal as your go-to breakfast food. So out of all of the grains out there, oatmeal actually has the highest fiber of any other grain that's available to you in that whole form. Um, so trying something like overnight oats, if you've never tried, um, is I would highly recommend. And you can make grain or uh, um, you can make breakfast oats in just a variety of ways. So um, we could talk about that more if anybody has questions or tips. Um, okay, next slide. So here's some budget friendly tips when we're talking about whole grains. Um, Purchasing your grains in bulk. So if you've never done that before, um, there are sections of the grocery store where they have very large containers of different kinds of products um, that you can measure out into a bag or a container of some kind and only pay for the amount that you want to purchase. I'm not talking about buying grains in like a 10 pound bag or you know a five pound bag that you can get maybe at a big box store, um, which you can if you know that if your family is that size and you need that amount, it's definitely more cost effective, but also um, just you know buying a cup or two at a time and trying something new and seeing if you like it. There's definitely a lot of store brands available. Um, I am a big fan of, um, I can't think of the name of it now, uh, a main company that does all kinds of grains and beans and lentils. Um, they can be six or seven dollars a bag. And I think they're a great company. Um, right next to dry beans that are 97 cents. Um, sometimes I go for one, sometimes I go for the other. So um, it really just depends on um, what you're needing that day at, that at the grocery store. Um, I love this one. So checking bakery markdown for good buys and then freeze what you don't want right away. So most grocery stores will have the day old um, bakery markdowns. And if you get used to the brands that you like and the whole grain breads, um, I see them often on there. I will just pick up a loaf for a dollar or two and then keep it in my freezer and then use it when I want it. So um, it's a really great uh, tip for that. Um, you can try baking your own whole wheat bread. We're in the middle of winter. It's a great time to do some bed breaking to keep up the um, 
the temperature in your house. So uh, maybe give that a try. And then I mentioned this before, that sweet or savory oatmeal for breakfast. If you've never done savory oatmeal, I highly recommend it. Um, it's really great. Um, instead of going the sweet side, you just add maybe um, some olive oil, salt and pepper. Um, I have added um, an egg on top as well. Um, and it's just delicious. So egg and cheese. So give that a try. So the next on the pyramid is eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. So think about the rainbow of color. And I like these three photos because it really shows you a really great example of a rainbow of color in fruits and vegetables. So every color that you see in a different fruit or vegetable represents the different nutrients that are in it. So eating that variety of nutrients really gives you the exposure to a larger um, pool of nutrients available to you, okay? So um, along with the Mediterranean diet, uh, people in this region are eating seasonally, okay? So when you're eating seasonally, the available produce that comes to you or the, the produce that's available to you seasonally changes, right? So for maybe for three months, you're eating uh, a certain four or five type of um, fruit or vegetable. And then in the next season, it's gonna be different. So just think of the life cycle of what is available um, to grow. And if you don't know, a really great way is to shop your local farm stand. Here in Fort Collins, we have multiple farm stands and several of them are still selling through the winter because they are harvest in the, um, in the fall and they have them in storage. Um, and some of them have like high tunnels or hoop houses that protect things like leafy greens um, and they can grow them through the winter. So you'll get a kind of an idea of what's available um, if you shop at um, local farm stands, which I highly recommend because the produce is just um, outstanding. So what else? Um, try to make up fruits and vegetables as a larger portion of your meal at every meal. OK, um, and not have that classic focus of, you know, you have your protein and then two sides. Right. Make your main part of your meal, your fruits or your vegetables and have those heavier, denser kinds of foods as your side. Think about it that way. Um, and then something else is fruit is also even also often, excuse me, eaten as a dessert. Um, so think about that as an option as well. Um, Definitely the Mediterranean has some amazing desserts, but um, they're eaten in small portions um, as a part of this study and what we know. It's not very large portions like what we're used to here in the States. So how to eat more fruits and vegetables, um, how to make those um, more abundant in your diet, okay? Um, Think about, so we already talked about filling half of your plate with fruits and veggies, but think about maybe trying some new things. Select a variety of different tastes and textures. And I love doing this when I have the time. Take uh, your veggies um, that look good at the store, whatever, you know, whenever you're there, and then cut them up and use them as a convenient snack. Um, there's been a lot of research done. I'm thinking back to my nutrition days as a student where there was, um, Studies showing that if you cut up like fruits and vegetables and you put them in the front of your refrigerator, whoever is in your household, even you, when you open up that refrigerator door looking for something to eat, if something is easy and right there, ready to grab and have a snack on, that person will most likely and more, more likely choose that vegetable. So you're making the better choice, the healthier choice, the easiest choice within your household environment. Um, there's another woman that I, um, I follow on social media and she's a meal planner. And she says uh, she has several young children in her household and she um, will cut up fruit and vegetables while she's preparing dinner or at the beginning of dinner and she'll put it out on the tabletop and whoever's in the household, her husband, I think maybe she cares for one of her parents and the younger kids always know there's going to be vegetables, um, something to snack on while she's making dinner. And she doesn't say a word, but when somebody comes through the kitchen looking for something, they will grab those vegetables and they will eat them. And so again, it's that easier choice, uh, making the best choice 
or the most nutritious making it the easiest. Um, so give that a try, maybe do a little experiment in your own household and see if that changes your habits um, or habits of others in your household. So along with that, trying new things, trying um, uh, uh, something fresh or sauteed or steamed or blanched or roasted. Um, roasting is one of my very favorite things to do. And with all of the winter produce we have, it's just the perfect time for it. Um, so take a look at maybe some options for that. And real quickly, uh, roasting vegetables is just chopping them up in even sizes, putting in a little olive oil, salt and pepper on a cookie sheet, putting it in the oven for between uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes at about 375 degrees. And what will happen is all of the natural sugars in that vegetable will come out, they'll get caramelized, and you just have the most the sweetest, savory um, vegetables you'll ever have. I love it. Um, make a big batch and then store that in your refrigerator and add that to meals throughout your week. And what that can actually do is um, increase your intake of vegetables um, and make you a more creative cook. It'll make you more um, uh, intuitive about what you can add vegetables to. And that's even veggies at breakfast. So you can see this here, including those sauteed veggies in your omelet um, or adding smoothies to a spinach. Uh, spinach to smoothies is a great idea as well. I am trying that lately and I really like it. So what about produce? Um, you know, it, it, home gardening can be expensive. Um, so if you are a gardener, um, you know, there's a lot of items, there's a lot of purchases that go into gardening. Um, but if you're a gardener, think about maybe expanding um, what you can do and learn how to preserve food, um, freezing it, canning it, drying it. And really, you could save up on a lot of money doing that. Um, if you uh, shop at the farmer's market, um, you can shop at the end of the day for best deals. You can use Double Up Food Bucks, which is a program we have here in Larimer County. Um, you can use SNAP benefits um, and then stocking up and preserving that food when you have the opportunity to is a really great option. And I also teach food preservation classes. So if you're looking to learn how to do that, I can help you with that as well. But really, I don't wanna deem what I, want to emphasize is that I don't want to demonize fresh or canned or frozen foods or really the, the frozen and the canned. They all have a place. Um, they're very healthy. Um, so with all of the, without all of the added salt or sugar or sauces, think about it that way. So when something is harvested out of a field, as soon as it's harvested, the nutritional value starts to deteriorate. So let's say you are buying greens from California. By the time they are harvested there, um, processed, you know, washed, bundled, moved to our grocery stores here in Colorado, it may be a week or more. Um, and then when you buy it, it may be a week or more before you eat it out of your refrigerator. And so frozen foods don't have that. Frozen foods are blanched and flash frozen within a day of being harvested a day or two um, in most facilities. And so you are sealing in a lot of nutrition in frozen foods or frozen vegetables and fruits. So think about that. Um, and then you can rinse off the, um, the liquid in canned vegetables and fruit as well um, and take a lot of those additives off. Um, and so depending on where you're at with your budget, um, think about um, incorporating some of those into um, your meal plans. Now, um, consuming less red meat um, is really important part of this um, because the Mediterraneans consume far less red meat than the typical Amer American diet. Um, and again, I want to emphasize they really only eat it about a couple of times a month. Um, and in place of that red meat, they're eating seafood, poultry, and eggs. Um, they also consume more plant-based proteins like beans and nuts and seeds on a daily basis. And that really makes up most of the protein that they're consuming. Um, you can see here on the right, I have a picture of hummus, and it's a ubiquitous food in the Mediterranean region. Um, it does provide some protein as well as really great healthy fats and fibers. Um, and I will talk a little bit about um, hummus as we go on. I have a special slide on that if you're curious. Okay, so picking your protein wisely um, is uh, a good thing to consider if you're thinking about changing what you're eating for protein. Um, so if available and affordable to you, 
try to eat fish one to two times a week. Um, so that's something like salmon, sardines, tuna, they all are a high in omega-3 fatty acids. And a four ounce serving two times a week is recommended by the American Heart Association as well. So um, a lot of science goes into this and these are really great recommendations for you to try out, okay? Um, you can say here, um, choosing skinless poultry, serving sizes are three to four ounces. Chicken breasts these days can be huge. So, oh, excuse me. So think about maybe cutting down the size of that chicken breast. I've seen some that are this big. Um, so half of that would be appropriate. Um, Learn to cook with dry beans. Um, legumes are so good for you and try to get those one to two times a week. We actually have a, a graduate PhD student at CSU who's specializing in legumes and beans. And she will tell you, you should be eating beans on a daily basis. And the nutritional powerhouse that beans and legumes are is just astounding. Um, and so if you are interested in that, I can also give you um, some really great resources to learn about wonderful recipes and the amazing health benefits of beans and legumes. So, oh, excuse me, um, having nuts on hand, keeping them available to you for a quick snack. Um, you might not know a serving of nuts is about a quarter cup, which is about the palm of your hand. Um, so nuts are very nutritious, but they're also very caloric. So just try to think, um, you know, keeping that those amounts in check. Having natural peanut butter instead of um, peanut butter with additive um, oils into it to keep it emulsified um, is a really great option. And then trying tahini as a dip or a spread, if you've not tried that before. And tahini is made out of um, sesame seed paste or sesame seeds uh, uh, blended into a paste. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick drink here. Let's see if we have anyone else joining us. Nope, we're good. Okay, so protein can be expensive, especially in animal, for animal proteins. So here's a few little budget tips for that. Um, Buying seafood in cans is a good option, and you can definitely get salt-free uh, cans. It's very easy to do, um, so you can limit that amount um, and have those in three to four ounce portions. Um, buying the dried or the canned beans uh, with no added salt and rinsing them well. Uh, I think I, it's about 75% of the amount of salt um, in a can can be rinsed off by rinsing it with water. So if you don't have just a small colander that makes dumping a can of beans into already, some people only have like the, you know, the large, I'm thinking like spaghetti, spaghetti bowl size of colanders and using something like that might be a little bit cumbersome. But if you can just get a small little colander that you can uh, just dump your can of beans into and just make that really easy and convenient for you, um, you probably will rinse your beans more often. You can um, purchase uh, nuts in bulk and then store those in one ounce portions. So you have your portion size already um, ready to go for snacks. It makes it a lot easier. Um, I know the price of eggs is insane right now. Um, I'm not sure if there's too much of a comparison between uh, 12 per dozen or uh, 12 eggs in a dozen or the 18 per carton. Um, but if you, wherever you're buying eggs, just do a price comparison between the 12 and the 18 um, and see if the 18 is a little bit cheaper per egg. Um, because eggs can last a long time in your refrigerator, about five weeks past the best by date. Um, so think about that as well. You, um, you, you will know if an egg is bad and eggs can last a really long time. It's such a great protein source. Um, and then, you know, just think about purchasing beef and pork and poultry less often. Just have more meatless meals. Um, this will also reduce the intake of saturated fat and calories. I also love anytime I do get uh, like a rotisserie chicken. That's very easy for me in my household. <laughs> Excuse me. I will save the bones um, and leftover meat from that uh, meal. And I will make stock out of that for later on. Um, and it's just such a great way to kind of uh, reuse the ingredients that you already have. Now, one of the most researched components of the Mediterranean diet is olive oil. So I'm going to stop here and kind of just do a little, a little bit of a, a deeper explanation on olive oil.
Okay. This is a little bit hard to believe. I still am just uh, surprised by it. But 25 to 40% of their total calories come from olive oil. Um, but it also replaces um, other sources of fat and high calorie foods. So um, if you are interested in olive oil, give it a try if you've not before. But things like nut oils and avocado oils are also considered heart healthy fats um, that you might look into as well. They can be pricey, but you can find them um, at certain places for lower prices. Um, you can eat them, you can eat olives in the form of olive oil, uh, olive oil in the form of olives. That's really wonderful for you as well. Um, you can use with salad, soup, bread, pasta, meats, anywhere you might think of using butter, typically, think about using olive oil and make that little replacement for um, butter and see how that works um, in your tastes and in your preferences. Um, I once had a woman when I taught this class, she said that she, uh, her husband grew up on a dairy farm and had very, very picky tastes about his butter. And when she learned more about the Mediterranean diet and um, how uh, olive oil is healthier for you, um, it's not a saturated fat, she started making a switch of, she would soften butter, the high quality butter that her husband preferred, and she would soften it and she would mix it with olive oil and then reharden it. Um, and she said she got up to about 50%, 50, 50 olive oil and butter before he noticed there was a difference. <laughs> so um, this is somebody with very discerning taste who didn't know that there was olive oil in his butter and he thought it was delicious. So give that a try, make that maybe a little encouragement for you um, to make the, some of that replacement. Um, but Olive oil can be used in place replacement for heavy cream sauces. Um, it can really add a complexity and flavor to soups um, and salads. Combining it with olive oil, um, vinegar to toss it is just a wonderful option. Salad dressings have so many additives. There's, if you take a look at the ingredients on a salad dressing, it's probably you know five or six or more lines of ingredients that are emulsifiers and things like that. But if you can just get used to making your own olive oil and vinegar dressing. Um, you'll be surprised how delicious it is. And then you don't waste the money of uh, uh, those bottles going bad in your refrigerator or just being in your refrigerator for too long, okay? And then we just recommend that um, you choose extra virgin olive oil the most often. And here's a chart for you. So this shows you the grades and the descriptions of different types of olive oil. So the more refined the olive oil is, generally the lower the quality but the higher the smoke point. So more refined olive oils are good for cooking at higher temperatures, such as roasting or frying, but the most nutritional benefits and flavor come from the olive oils that are not refined. And extra virgin olive oils are not refined and are the highest quality of olive oil, okay? So that should be used for things like um, dips and for finishing foods, but not heated to higher temperatures because then the quality might be compromised. Okay, now I had a woman from Italy in one of my classes. And when she saw pomace on this olive oil or on this slide, she just, she's like, I need to say something. She said, pomace is garbage. <laughs> she said, no one should be eating pom or using pomace olive oil. And I don't even know that that's even something you could buy in a typical grocery store. Pomace is basically the leftover material from pressing olives. So you might think about, um, we don't maybe don't have a very good image of that, but we do maybe have a better image mentally of what that looks like for winemaking when all the juice is pressed out um, and reserved, you can squeeze it even more and extract as much as you possibly can um, out of that for other uses. Um, and that's what this pomace is. And she said, we give the pomace to the pigs. So um, I don't know that I ever have come across it in uh, just a regular grocery store, maybe a commercial setting. I'm not sure, um, but just a little, a little anecdote about that. <clears throat> now, most grocery stores are going to have a great variety of olive oil, but 
they can be really pricey. Um, so try some things we like to talk about for budgeting is trying a membership warehouse um, or an international grocery store for better deals. Um, and then save the extra virgin olive oil for salads and finishing it um, instead of cooking with it. And olive oil, its freshness does matter. So don't, if you're not going to use a large quantity, maybe you should consider just using a smaller quantity and only what you can use in the next few months. Um, or maybe, you know, you do go and find a really great price at a membership warehouse and you share, you split the bottle, you have your own olive oil bottle to serve with um, instead of keeping it in the big one, big containers, maybe share that with a family member or a friend or something that um, you like to cook with and maybe split the cost. Um, I do that sometimes with my sister. <laughs> we'll buy something really large and then we'll split the cost. Um, but I'm lucky that she's close by. Um, we do want to recommend that you keep away the olive oil from heat and not keep that right next to your stove um, because it can um, deteriorate in quality if it's um, if it's exposed to heat and also light. So you can find olive oil in mostly you'll see it in the dark green bottles or in like a, a metal container. Um, those are the best things to purchase for larger um, quantities not for larger quantities, for um, for better keeping, excuse me. Um, you can use canola oil or another vegetable oil if you don't, if you're not comfortable with the price of olive oil, um, but we just obviously recommend the olive oil for all of its um, uh, health properties, okay? Okay, so the next is eating moderate amounts of dairy. So really the key component of this is moderate. So more often than not in the Mediterranean, dairy is eaten in the form of cheese like feta, like the little picture you see here on the right, and Greek yogurt. It's not really drinking as a beverage like milk is here. Um, and Greek yogurt is thicker, it contains more protein, there's less carbohydrates than regular yogurt, um, and this might be a better option for somebody with diabetes. Um, full flat Full fat plain yogurts are usually the choice of Mediterraneans, but they're eating smaller portions again um, and maybe just eaten once a day or a few times a week, not every, not all the time. So a serving of yogurt is one cup and one ounce of cheese is about the size of two or three dice. And that also is one serving. So think about the size of a dice. It's always a little bit shocking for people to hear that, but again, that's that moderation piece. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, with the, um, for budgeting, you can switch down from full fat sour cream to light and then to Greek yogurt. Um, and those are options for higher priced cheeses. Okay. Now think about um, snacks and what that looks like. Um, the Mediterranean diet enhances your nutrition by including plant-based spreads um, instead of deli processed meats with butter or margarine or mayonnaise. Think of like a typical ham sandwich or something like that. Um, one spread is olive oil uh, tapenade, which is finely chopped olive oils um, made from ripe olives. Um, it's really fantastic. Um, so you can try something like that. Um, experimenting with those kinds of things to make your own kinds of dips. Um, and think about maybe purchasing low, fewer of the low nutrient, high price snacks, such as sweetened individual yogurts. They can have quite a bit of sugar in them, even though they are more convenient for being on the go. Um, things like potato chips, pretzels, crackers, things like that. Um, but instead try things like beans and lentil spreads with carrot chips, celery, celery um, pitas, um, dried grain bread, whole grain dried bread or bagels. So you make like little bagel chips out of your bread is a great idea. Okay, so this one, some, some this might be one of some people's favorite components of this diet. Um, again, it's consumed in moderation. And doctors are, um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but doctors say you don't need to try, you don't need to start um, drinking red wine for the health benefits. If you're not already drinking red wine, that's totally fine. Um, so in moderation, what that means is women uh, a serving a day, men is two servings a day, and a serving of wine is five ounces. 
Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive red wine. It can be any red wine. Um, but if you are not already drinking red wine, drinking purple grape juice might be a really great alternative to wine. And then what about other drinks? So drinks can be really expensive to purchase. Um, they can really take up a big part of your budget. Um, so we like to recommend just making sure that you use something like a reusable water bottle that can really help you stay hydrated um, and uh, not have to purchase bottled water. If you wanna make it more interesting, uh, you can uh, use, make your own fruited water. So you can see here, we've got some uh, citrus slices with mint um, in mixed in there. I love adding cucumbers to that mix as well. Um, if you are um, interested in cutting down on your soda intake, having um, sparkling water is a really great option to that. And you can add maybe just a little splash of juice or even a spritzer we have here too. Um, if you're having wine, add a little seltzer and make it a wine spritzer. Um, and then think about unit pricing. If you're gonna get single servings of drinks, they are going to be more expensive than if you purchase a larger single container. Okay, so this is the last component of the diet that we'll be discussing, and it's using fresh herbs and spices. And this is one of my favorite things. So uh, herbs and spices add such a variety of color and uh, flavor to dishes, and they do that without adding salt or sugar. They can really stand in for using less salt and sugar. Um, and in the Mediterranean, fresh spices and herbs are just a staple of the foods that they eat. Um, you can use dried, you can use fresh, they all have wonderful health benefits for you. Polyphenols that don't exist in other fruits and vegetables. So you can think of it as this whole other bonus um, nutrition available to you um, to, um, to, and also that it's it's delicious as well. Fruits and vegetables, excuse me, the, that they are delicious as well. Um, so if you don't have a mortar or pestle, I would recommend highly getting one. It's so much fun to use. Um, and what happens is when you, pound um, either dried spices or even fresh spices. I do. I use both. Um, I'll get like um, fennel seeds or cumin seeds or coriander seeds, that kind of thing. And I will grind them fresh in the uh, mortar and pestle um, before I use them. I also have ground too, but I love spices. And so I have I have too many, really. Um, <laughs> if you grind that up in the mortar and pestle, those oils are released and then it becomes much more fragrant and it's just so pleasurable um, to, to consume. So if you take anything from this, add more spices and herbs <laughs> um, without you know, trying to think that you're gonna have to take anything away. Okay, it is so easy to grow herbs in your home, at your home, just in a small little pot. If you've got some sunshine and some time and some soil, um, you can keep those available to you. Um, if you have a little garden, you can freeze or dehydrate the stems. Um, on hearty herbs for soups and stocks. I do that. Even when I purchase fresh from the store, I will save the stems and use that for cooking later on. Um, you can also make your own infused sugars and salts with fresh herbs. So if that kind of piques your interest, take a look at that as well. And then we'll be closing out here in the next, just I have just a handful of slides left. Um, additional budget-friendly tips, um, which are um, really great depending on you know, what your needs are, um, shopping store brands can really help and comparing stores. It's amazing how much of a difference prices can be for the same product at different grocery stores. Um, and then shopping your um, grocery store for sales, obviously, but then buying in bulk um, if your food isn't going to spoil for a week or two. And that's, again, um, either like if you could get a large package of, you know, chicken breast or something like that, or ground turkey or something, you can buy a larger portion and then freeze it into a large package, freeze it into smaller portions um, for later. Don't forget your leftovers. Um, you reuse those for other meals. Um, <clears throat> and then eating out less and prepare and prepared, using prepared foods sparingly, excuse me, um, can also help save you quite a lot of money. Okay, 
So we're at the point of the presentation where we're just going to review a few things. So I covered a lot of information in the last 45 minutes. Um, I can send these slides to you. I will do that. Um, so expect to see an email um, that can um, help you remember these kinds of things. But really, um, what I want you to take away is that just by making a few of these changes in your diet, you can control your risk factor for some of these diseases. Um, and I'm going to mention this next, so I apologize. These slides are a little bit out of order. Um, but anything that you do can make a difference, and that is proven. So some people have asked, you know, I have a terrible diet. I, my doctor told me to do Mediterranean diet. Is this really going to make a difference? And the answer is yes, it absolutely will make a difference. There are There's research done showing that the more closely that you follow this diet, so the more things that we did, um, we talked about today, the lower incidences that doctors are seeing of these kinds of diseases. So take a look at this list. What's interesting is that since 1970 um, research was done, many long-term population studies have been done, which helps dis uh, scientists discover what you're seeing here. And that's just not the case with other fad diets. This is such a unique diet or lifestyle pattern because there's consistent research done over time again and again and again, showing the kinds of benefits that um, you'll see here, reducing weight, blood pressure, cholesterol, and reducing the risk of all of these diseases. Um, so it really is just such a good argument. Okay. Now, again, one more takeaway is that really being mindful, and that's again at the bottom of that pyramid, plan your meals, make a grocery list and shop with intention, um, sit down to eat, um, really slowing down and being mindful of what you're eating can really help um, the amount that you're eating and what you are because you make more, um, you're more aware of what's happening while you're eating your meal. So um, enjoying your, your meals with family and friends, slowing down, taking time to notice the smell, the texture and the flavor of the foods is what I was just mentioning. Um, if you're doing that, you're gonna have a more pleasurable meal and it really is going to prevent, um, your, it's gonna prevent you from overeating. And then at the bottom of that pyramid, excuse me, <clears throat> of that getting that exercise, staying active is just as important to our overall health and just as key to the Mediterranean diet as eating well is. I really want to stop and make sure that that is really well understood. So American Heart Association um, has put out the recommendations to aim for at least 150 minutes of exercise per week. And what that breaks down into is 30 minutes of exercise a day. Um, and that is, you know, things like uh, walking, gardening, cleaning the house, something more rigorous like running, biking, hiking, or swimming um, you can do. But really... If you need to break that down even further to make it a part of your life, that's parking at the end of the parking lot. Um, it's taking the, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Really any extra movement that you can incorporate into your day will all add up to the course of your day. And then water, um, making sure that you really drink water, stay hydrated. Being hydrated is so important for our health and all the functions that your body needs to do. Um, so I wanna emphasize that. And then here's the last slide. Make changes gradually, okay? So with all that I presented today, again, it's a reminder, this is a lifestyle change, so it may require time. So don't allow yourself to become overwhelmed trying to do everything all at once, but try one thing at a time. It makes it takes 21 days, about three weeks for a human brain <laughs> to make or break a habit, okay? So give yourself that time to make those changes. And then once you make those changes and you get used to it, it'll become a habit and it'll seem so much more natural. Um, so for example, think about um, consuming at least two or three vegetables a day if you aren't already. Um, it's a really easy thing to do if you set that intention. Um, and then you can think about adding something else as the weeks go on, okay? So again, if you're thinking about really, where do I start? Don't think about this as, as a restriction. This lifestyle is not about restriction. Think about what can you add into your life, into your lifestyle, into your diet that we talked about today before you think about 
taking anything away. Um, be kind to yourself. You can have the foods you like. Enjoy them mindfully. And then, uh, oh, one last thing here. If you are interested in a hummus recipe, I have one. I will send this to you. Um, it's really great, versatile um, type of recipe that you can make your own. Um, that's just so delicious, okay? All right, well, that is the end of our presentation. Um, I ran just a little bit long, but I will go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it was such a pleasure to have you. Um,